Welcome everyone and thank you for joining tonight's Healthcare Navigation Town Hall. My name is Ashley and I'm the Program Specialist with MFSUS. Um, I will be in the wings if anyone should have any technical issues and we'll be monitoring the chat for any questions that will be addressed at the end, if not already addressed throughout the presentation. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Captain Andrew McNeil from the U.S. OutCan Health Services team. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Uh, so, uh, my name is Captain Andrew McNeil. Um, uh, like uh, Alex said, I'm the uh, health admin staff officer for uh, uh, all of OutCan U.S. Uh, we, I mean, the team work out of. Uh, um, uh, out of CDLS Washington, but uh, but we also uh, support all of um, uh, all of the NORAD uh, debts as well. Um, I'm going to get ready to share the screen here. So the whole point of the uh, whole purpose of of this 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 town hall, this briefing, uh, is just to provide to uh, some some a little more focus uh, uh, information and discussion on uh, the. Uh, Navigating the health system here in the U.S. for uh, for families uh, and dependents not uh, not so much going to focus on um, a uniform member uh, admin or concerns. Uh, Want to kind of get into uh, the the dependent side of things primarily because of a significant number of changes that uh, took place over the last last couple of months and uh, sort of continue ongoing adjustments to to, to those changes. Uh, is that sharing with everybody? We're good. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, uh, just through here. So, just some uh, kind of points that I want to get through in this presentation before we uh, just get on to the questions. I've tailored some of this uh, this information uh, to uh, the questions that you guys have uh, put up ahead of time. Um, I'm just going to start off a quick introduction of, uh, of, uh, of the team. Um, just can give you guys a little background and context, uh, what the kind of policy foundation is for uh, the health benefits that uh, uh, our families get while we're, while we're uh, out camp here in the U.S. Um, uh, go over some of the registration process for uh, for both TRICARE and for the public service health care plan uh, and making sure that you guys uh, are signed up for the correct uh, the benefits that you're supposed to be getting. Um, go over what the entitlement to care uh, is uh, under our DOD benefits. Uh, kind of talk through some of the application of uh, the coordination of, of, of the benefits between the public service and and uh, uh, and our TRICARE coverage. Um, we can touch on some of the limitations of the health uh, healthcare plans that that we that we have, but uh, um, but I'm sure you guys are, are familiar enough with them as, as it is. Um, uh, and then uh, talk a little bit about claims management. Uh, this is like I don't know if any of you were hoping that I was going to go into great depth and sort of like step by steps in this uh, in this forum, but uh, I'm not. Um, this is basically mostly going to be pointing in the direction of all the resources that you guys are going to need to to, to navigate uh, claims processing while uh, while you're down here. Um, and we can talk about special cases, but we'll probably just go straight into uh, 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 questions unless uh, unless anybody identifies themselves as uh, being one of the uh, our, our special case uh, cases out in out in uh, the states here. Uh, okay, so uh, our team as uh, Small. Um, it's uh, led by the health services attaché, uh, Commander Ian Beck. He's not so much involved with the actual direct support uh, uh, management um, piece of it. He's 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 more, working more strategic stuff. Um, uh, the cat met hello, uh, the technical manager Jeff McDonald. Uh, he's uh, he's a doctor, but he's uh, uh, primarily focused on uh, the medical administration for uniform members. Uh, um, he's only. Tangentially, occasionally involved in uh, in helping coordinate care for uh, uh, dependents. Um, myself, uh, I'm health admin, which uh, kind of lines me up for a lot of the financial stuff, which then of course has a lot of uh, insurance nexus, which uh, kind of feeds into making a lot of this dependent uh, uh, dependent care access issues um, sort of my portfolio. Uh, our newest member, uh, Master Pro, uh, Kevin Ramshore. 
Um, he's just on the ground. We're getting him, trying to train him up quick um, to uh, take some of that uh, actual care access stuff off my plate so I can focus more on, on sort of uh, policy, um, uh, policy updates. But um, uh, he's going to be uh, a, a year. I mean, pushing a lot of the questions that come my way to him uh, to help uh, uh, navigate you guys through. And he can usually provide a bit more of uh, a hand-holding uh, uh, customer service experience <laughs> than, than I'll be able to. Um, that records, again, this is mostly for uniform members. Um, uh, she manages the uh, electronic medical record system for, uh, for the CAF um, uh, down here in the States, uh, recognizing that some dependents do also have profiles open uh, uh, in there. She'll be able to take uh, any any uh, records or, or uh, clinical notes and things like that that need to be uh, inputted. And anything that you know that is in there, you need to access it. You can access it, reach out to her. Uh, and claims, uh, Ms. Kim Lalon, she's the one who was really jockeying the um, uh, the MedInmin box. If any of you guys are sending in uh, any claims or questions there, uh, she's triaging that, uh, those emails, uh, kicking them to whoever's group in, and doing a lot of the uh, actual grunt work on processing those claims. Uh, so. Um, uh, we're, I feel like we're getting better on the, on the, on the turnaround in those, and it's, that's entirely up uh, down to her, so uh, we really appreciate her. Um, right, so uh, getting right into uh, the, just a quick background on, on the um, policy foundations that, that sort of govern uh, how and why we're, 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 we get the uh, health benefits that we do down here for. So for, uh, for dependents, um, no, doesn't, again, not so much about uh, uniform members, uh, but for dependents, um, the, uh, uh, thanks to provisions within the Canada Health Act and uh, the Federal Public Service Act, uh, the um, uh, federal government employees uh, and their dependents are entitled to uh, a portable uh, degree of uh, additional uh, health coverage above and beyond uh, and outside of uh, what uh, the province are able to ride. Um, this is pretty applicable for, for us at uh, OutCan. Um, that's not just military independence, it's, this, uh, this applies to uh, global affairs and, and any other federal employee that's uh, working abroad. Um, uh, they have their, uh, uh, they ensure a Canadian sort of standard of, of, of care uh, through uh, the Public Service Health Care Plan and Public Service Dental Care Plan. Um, now, this is administered, as I'm sure most of you know, um, by uh, uh, contractors uh, domestically, Canada Life, uh, and then uh, as a subcontractor for Canada Life uh, for uh, provision of comprehensive uh, coverage um, to replace provincial, uh, uh, provincial coverage. Um, that's uh, now managed by uh, MSH International, um, and we'll get more into that a bit. Um, additionally, uh, federal government has certain uh, responsibilities uh, which they recognize they're, they're part of the responsibilities there's, is recognizing that there's some gaps in some of the uh, uh, some of the reasonable uh, um, expectations of coverage for for certain items um, uh, that are missed by the uh, public service health care plan um, and so there's provisions for certain benefits under the foreign service directives uh, and specific to uh, us and our dependents under the foreign military service instructions um uh, now these are rather than being contracted through uh, a, a administrator uh, company uh, these are uh, these are funds available through uh, through the crown directly um, which uh, uh, which you're entitled to um, to so hopefully patch most of the gaps uh, that you might experience uh, specifically when posted abroad um, and encountering some of the nuances of, of accessing um, a number of services, but in our case, obviously, uh, medical care. Uh, again, I'll get into more detail uh, on what those are actually are uh, later. Uh, so uh, the care that we get from Department of Events, well, more specifically here in the States, the sort of foundation for uh, the DOD's obligation to provide uh, provide medical care to uh, us and our families um, uh, is built on the NATO Status of Forces Agreement. Now, it doesn't go into great detail about what exactly all those things are, uh, but it, uh, it is part of uh, 
the, the NATO treaty agreement, um, it guarantees that uh, whatever standard, uh, whatever the national standard of care uh, that the, uh, the host nation or other NATO visiting uh, member nations, uh, whatever the standard of care is for their military, uh, that is the bare minimum that will be provided uh, to, um, uh, to visiting military or visiting military and their families uh, when in, went on invited on official business um, uh, free of charge. So that's sort of like the baseline. On top of that, we have a bilateral, a bilateral agreement with, uh, between us and the US uh, called the Reciprocal Healthcare Agreement, um, which spells out uh, some additional, uh, uh, additional benefits that go kind of above and beyond what's included in the NATO SOFA. Uh, based on the uh, scope and uh, spectrum of care which is provided for uh, their nations when in our country as, as, a, as a host nation. Um, and again, I'll get, uh, I'll get a bit more into that in the next slide. Uh, and then sort of uh, synchronizing, synchronizing that and providing the direction uh, to uh, the Department of Defense medical facilities on how to actually, uh, how, they, how they should be providing us care uh, is the uh, DOTI uh, 6015. Um, this kind of uh, outlines exactly what the entitlements are for uh, NATO, uh, uh, NATO military members and their families uh, receive, and then what additional things we receive uh, as having a reciprocal health care agreement for the US. Uh, I'm right into that. Yeah, so this is a table directly from that Doty 6015, um, and it's kind of uh, kind of busy. But uh, what it spells out is, if you look across the first two lines, um, you'll see the uh, military members and dependents uh, of NATO countries uh, who have an RHCA um, or Anybody in a uniform or for care received in a uniform service facility, uh, we're entitled to no cost inpatient, outpatient, uh, and dental care. Dental care uh, for dependents dependent on if that facility provides dental care for uh, their, uh, or also for US dependents, which is very few. It's usually just remote, so it doesn't really apply to um, uh, any of our postings. Um, uh, However, uh, the civilian inpatient care uh, is not going to be covered by DOD uh, if, it's a, if it's a hospital admission to a civilian uh, hospital, not going to be covered by DOD. Um, uh, unless the uh, unless the hospital, uh, unless the military uh, medical facility is actually administering the care uh, uh, through the uh, through that civilian. Uh, facility. Uh, now, uh, for those who aren't captured by our ACA, the, uh, the inpatient services are not going to be covered by DOD. They'll, they can be received in a, uh, in a military uh, medical facility, uh, but they're going to be on a reimbursed basis. Now, uh, that's at which point the, the, the Crown uh, uh, will step in to, uh, to pay for that. Um, however, um, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's not just going to be a, uh, a no-cost service. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, the nuance to the RHCA uh, that we have with the U.S. Uh, is that because there are so many more Americans, there are so many more Canadians uh, posted to the U.S. than there are uh, Americans posted to Canada, uh, what a clause that they insisted on including in the, uh, in the agreement was that uh, the provision of these additional uh, uh, entitlements uh, was going to be on a numerically reciprocal basis. So uh, they, based on the number of postings they had uh, here and the number of postings we had here, um, identified uh, only uh, uh, eight states plus the District of Columbia, which, uh, which would actually fall under this RHCA. Um, and they're listed there at the bottom. So it's the DC, California, Georgia, Hawaii, Maryland, North Carolina, Texas, Virginia, and Washington State. 
Um, all those, any, anybody posted in any of those states, you guys are receiving the uh, uh, that uh, R, those RCA benefits. Uh, anybody who's not, unfortunately, uh, is um, is not going to be receiving the free uh, inpatient care. Um, but as a by way of sort of background on uh, on uh, if you're hearing about the RCA and and how that impacts uh, the bills you get, uh, this is kind of the, the, the policy background on that. Uh, okay, going into, yeah, so, uh, so with, uh, I'll just touch on, I'm sure pretty much everybody is already well aware, um, the, uh, the transition from uh, the previous uh, post for healthcare plan administrators to uh, the current uh, uh, one. So obviously it was, it was Sun Life in Canada it used to be, that's how we got all your supplemental uh, uh, care and um, uh, our supplemental benefits uh, in, in Canada. And uh, when OutCan, it was uh, uh, for Sun Life, Alliance Global was was the uh, was the claims administrator for uh, for the US and uh, That contract got shifted over to um, uh, Canada Life. Uh, who's already holding the public service dental care plan, so that got amalgamated under the same uh, same company. Uh, however, for the Outcan uh, subcontractor for those claims, I think I already mentioned, um, that got uh, handed over to uh, MSH International. Um, now, back in July 1st, once this transition happened, uh, that required a, a whole enrollment process, which I'm sure most of you had a, uh, a, a if he experienced with, uh, I, I certainly heard uh, all the all the horror stories. Um, but fortunately, things seem to be mostly smoothing out. Um, but just kind of touch on uh, uh, that real quick here. Um, uh, got the link here. Uh, what you're going to need to do the, your uh, your positive enrollment with uh, with Canada Life uh, is going to be the certificate number, which uh, is hasn't changed from from your previous. Uh, your previous coverage with uh, with Sun Life uh, it can be found uh, through your OR uh, and, and uh, through the base base system. Um, and uh, the thing that has changed though is the plan numbers, and those are uh, uh, those are now based on your birthday, which was there. Um, you may need to add three zeros to the beginning of that to make them the right number of digits for the for the registration process, but uh, that should allow you to uh, go ahead and. Do your uh, complete your positive enrollment with Canada Life uh, and synchronize what should have been your um, uh, uh, your your dental uh, plan coverage uh, uh, with with now your uh, your your uh, healthcare plan coverage. Once you're uh, once you can get onto your uh, login and uh, um, and see that you both your both your policies are active. Uh, first off, you'll be able to access uh, a uh, insurance card finally um, looks something like that uh, that one there at the corner. Uh, it's the same one for uh, Canada Life and MSH. Um, it's all it's all in one thing. Um, uh, so if you're asked for that at some point down here, uh, you can provide that. It's a print off. I don't think they have any plans on making uh, providing uh, plastic cards, um, but uh, but it, this is a bit of an improvement from from what uh, what Sunlight and uh, an Alliance was offering. Uh, but once you have all, all that finished, uh, then you're able to go on and uh, do your registration with uh, MSH. Um, the uh, now, once you have both these done, you want to verify all your personal info is correct. Um, if there's any discrepancies or whatever that may cause issues with uh, with sort of claims processing, uh, so you want to contact them and, and flag that to make sure it's amended. Uh, it's kind of a uh, uh, the information kind of trickles down. Apparently, uh, it starts off in in the pay system where uh, our dependents are, are sort of listed. That filters into Canada Life Systems, uh, and Canada Life System filters into MSH. Uh, so, if there's discrepancies, you want to go kind of one level higher uh, to Canada Life or to the OR to, uh, uh, to try to confirm uh, where where the the, the mix-up is that can be uh, rectified. Uh, dependents might not be listed uh, uh, on the uh, MSH profile once, once you have that uh, registered. You'll need the same numbers and uh, uh, to, to do all your first time login with this. Um, uh, but dependents might not be listed at first uh, until the first claims are being processed. Um, 
Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions, uh, both as part of this, but, but more generally, uh, people concerned about sort of the timelines for um, once they've submitted the, uh, the claims online, uh, how long it takes for uh, either something to appear on the portal to, to indicate that that's been received and it's, and it's in processing, uh, or, to, or for that matter, to, to, to receive your, uh, uh, your reimbursement. I'm optimistically chalking that up, uh, chalking up the delays to uh, uh, so the lingering chaos of, of, the, of the transition, and they're still ironing out some of the, some of the processes and getting, getting their staff uh, squared away. Um, but I, uh, but I also heard confirmation that they are getting through them. They are, uh, they do eventually. Uh, 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 confirmation does eventually appear that uh, uh, the, the the claim has been received, and um, uh, uh, and people have gotten checks. So it's not you're not throwing it into the ether just yet. Um, but uh, it, it may may take some time and. They're they're uh, they're hopefully improving as, as I think the customer service has uh, really with with uh, with this whole enrollment process. Um, yeah, again, once once you have your your MSH uh, uh, set up, they're working on a uh, a app I think for this as well as uh, the the Camera Life app. Um, so you'll be able to uh, even submit things with your phone. Um, the uh, uh, yeah, you'll be able to submit uh, everything online. If you are still having issues, still technical issues, of course, I don't have any levers to pull with uh, uh, working through the actual technical issues, either with MSH or, or Canada Life. They've, they've been actively hostile to uh, our team's efforts to try to proactively help supporting, uh, supporting their customers with, uh, uh, with troubleshooting some stuff. They, they really insist on working direct, uh, interfacing directly with, uh, with customers. Um, uh, and again, it sounds like the, the customer service piece has improved, um, but you're still running into technical issues uh, where you can't get onto uh, your profile or for whatever reason. There is also a, uh, uh, there is an email and you can just submit the claims form with all, all the uh, company documents to, uh, to the email uh, and provided your, your coverage is active, uh, then, then uh, this should still get processed. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, any of those technical issues, they, you guys are going to have to go through uh, through the companies. Uh, I don't have any workarounds or special contacts to try to to try to expedite things. Uh, sorry. Uh, right. So registering for uh, for for your Tricare for your DoD benefits. Um, so that comes part and parcel with uh, your uh, what should be your in clearance process. Every base seems to have a slightly different. Process for getting their 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 uh, their folks uh, their their IDs and getting them all registered, um, which is somewhat understandable. Um, but uh, at, at a certain point, ideally as soon as possible, uh, you guys, uh, everybody's family should be uh, uh, ideally when members are going to get their IDs and get registered, uh, their 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 CAT cards, their Deers cards. Uh, Take your family with, do it all at one appointment, so you guys, uh, you don't have to try to wait longer and get another appointment. Um, uh, you're gonna need your passport and posing message, obviously. Um, there's a this detailed one pager is uh, is up on the the website. I'll, I'll uh, the MFS site that I'll share the link for uh, later on here. Um, is, yeah, detailed process for, for what you need to guys, what you guys need to keep in mind uh, when getting getting all like, your registration sorted out. Uh, but key thing, once you've gotten your Deers card, you guys need to visit your nearest or whatever you think is your most likely uh, uh, military medical treatment facility that you're going to be using. Um, to go to the patient administration office uh, and make sure that you're registered and rostered to that facility. Uh, because if you're not, uh, you won't be able to. Uh, get uh, or you will have trouble getting uh, appointments, um, and you'll probably run into issues with uh, with access to your uh, uh, your Genesis portal, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, uh, when you do, uh, and ideally do this initially when you're talking to the dearest folks, but if not, uh, confirm it with uh, the patient administration uh, office uh, to make sure that your the the benefits your your coverage in the system you are receiving 
uh, NATO affiliate and NATO affiliate active duty family member uh, benefits, not foreign military, not NORAD, not some other weird thing. You guys, everybody, all Canadians down here need to be registered as NATO uh, so that we, they know to, that we're entitled to all the benefits captured under, with, uh, under the NATO SOFA. Um, as well, if it's applicable, make sure that uh, if you're in our, uh, a reciprocal healthcare state, uh, make sure that they, they've included that you're receiving uh, benefits under that reciprocal health care agreement so that uh, there's no question about whether or not you're entitled to um, that uh, inpatient care, whatever comes up. Um, but yeah, detailed one pager there. If, uh, if you guys have any other questions, some links uh, and, uh, uh, and other resources. Um, right, so just Kind of key summary points um, with uh, uh, with the different um, plans that we're, we're working with uh, with Poster's healthcare plan and with uh, with Tricare. Um, so before uh, one July, uh, we were advising members, uh, or the the direction to, to members and their families is that uh, for um, for any claims or health expenses. Uh, the public service healthcare plan had to be the primary insurer and built first. Uh, this is a TRICARE policy. Um, the, they had a requirement that if there was a, uh, a policy owned by a TRICARE beneficiary uh, that what came from a U.S. Uh, policy provider, uh, that it needed to be uh, always built first, TRICARE always last. Um, with the change uh, over to Sun Life or over to uh, uh, Candle Life and MSH, uh, MSH is not has no, has not an American company has no uh, American corporate holdings. Uh, and so, as far as Tricare is concerned, uh, it doesn't doesn't meet the requirement to uh, be identified as a uh, other primary health insurer, um, which is great because that frees us up to not have to <laughs> have to uh, necessarily do everything. Uh, through them first, uh, we're able to use our, uh, our families are able to use our, our, our TRICARE benefits uh, just like we do as a primary um, and uh, uh, which saves a lot of hassle um, uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, like I said, uh, it's administered by Canada Life now uh, and MSH uh, for OCAN. Um, already went over the positive enrollment there. Uh, yeah, big issue. And I know this and it's probably not news for anybody. Uh, big issue has been uh, that MSH does not provide direct billing services for comprehensive policy uh, holders. It still does um, as the claim processor for uh, the public service supplemental emergency out of country uh, benefits. Um, so that's that is that can be relevant for anybody's uh, anybody who's like coming. Uh, you know, mid move and gets in a car accident or whatever. Um, uh, the as soon as you're across the border, the uh, you're still going to use the uh, uh, your Canada Life um, uh, how can emergency stuff. Uh, but for comprehensive, once once your comprehensive stuff is active, once your comprehensive policy is active, the uh, uh, that direct billing uh, from trade from provider to uh, to the insurance uh, insurance company uh, is no longer an option. So you're going to be paying out of pocket up front uh, and then submitting uh, submitting the receipts to, to claim for reimbursement. Um, now, again, now that we're able to use Tricare uh, as our as our primary insurer down here, uh, that can be kind of circumvented. Except for cases where uh, there's a civilian hospital admission that's not going to be covered by Tricare, uh, any of the Tricare copays, uh, you are still able to claim uh, through MSH uh, as long as you provide the uh, explanation of benefits from uh, from Tricare. Um, Tricare doesn't have any or doesn't provide us uh, commercial pharmaceutical benefits. So if you're purchasing any uh, medications uh, or, or medical equipment from commercial pharmacies. Um, uh, you're going to be claiming through MSH for that uh, and optometry. Um, yeah. 
for TRICARE, again, the primary insurer. Now it's uh, administered by, uh, uh, it's also administered by, by companies just like public service healthcare plan is sort of the, the, the pot of money. Uh, TRICARE is, is sort of the, the, uh, the policy uh, manager that provides the money and sort of regulatory functions. Um, uh, but as far as the actual like claims and uh, so the referrals management, uh, and so the direct like benefits uh, coordination management, uh, that's done by uh, two companies, I left one off here. Um, for the Eastern half of the US, uh, it's administered by Humana. And for the Western half of the US, it's uh, administered by uh, uh, HealthNet, uh, HealthNet Federal. Um, the sounds like they're going to be possibly uh, putting those contracts out to uh, to competition this year. So those those companies may also be uh, transitioning, but hopefully that'll have a less uh, a less jarring effect on on us as as visiting military than. Uh, uh, the public service uh, transition did. Um, now for uniform members, uh, we're categorized as far as the, the, the types of benefits that we receive from TRICARE. Uh, we're uh, equivalent to TRICARE prime uh, beneficiaries. Uh, for our dependents, uh, they're uh, classed as, or they're equivalent to uh, TRICARE select group B beneficiaries. Um, now, this comes with some benefits, but some drawbacks compared to the prime. Um, there's no referral to, uh, there's no refer referral required from uh, a military uh, provider in order to seek civilian care. You can go to uh, whatever civilian uh, health care provider you, uh, you like, as long as, and, and, uh, as, long as uh, uh, the, the service itself is, is covered under the, the, the TRICARE um, uh, spectrum of care. Um, uh, however, you're also obviously entitled to uh, uh, access care um, at DOD facilities. We encourage you to. Um, it's not like back home. Uh, we, uh, it's, you know, the, the larger facilities, there's some, the smaller clinics are often set up more as, as uh, uh, readiness management clinics. They're similar to the CDUs back home on base. Um, but uh, any of the, the major hospitals are, you know, com community, uh, community hospitals in there. Uh, they were as good as any any hospital uh, back home, um, and uh, uh, yeah. So uh, for Tracker Select, uh, when you're seeking care uh, on the economy, doesn't apply to MTF. There's no cost associated with uh, treatment at MTF. Uh, but uh, for uh, care received at um, civilian providers, uh, there's copays and cost shares associated with certain services. Uh, the copays are fixed dollar amounts based on the type of service. Uh, I've got a link there uh, here in a second for uh, uh, where you can you look up uh, by, by type of service. Um, uh, cost shares uh, are going to be percentage uh, of the total bill that you're going to be responsible for paying, usually about 20% uh, of the total bill, but that only applies to uh, non-TRICARE network providers. Um, by the way, both of those claim will through MSH um, uh, after the fact. Um, now, again, does not uh, Tracker's not going to pick up the bill for uh, Cilia Hospital admission unless they put you there. Um, dependents don't get dental services uh, or dental coverage uh, out of the economy. Uh, that's a separate Tricare plan uh, for uh, for the American dependents. Um, and yeah, and like I said, the only place you're going to get dental care on base is uh, is uh, in some remote locations that we don't really have to uh, Optometry is another thing. Uh, uniform members can get our op uh, uh, optometry services on uh, on base, but uh, dependents are, are, are going to have to go on the economy. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, no commercial pharmacy benefits. Um, like I mentioned, uh, there's no requirement to declare, and if any TRICARE rep ever asks you about uh, whether or not you have another health insurance, just say no. Um, uh, there's no requirement to declare uh, the public service coverage as, as an OHI anymore. Um, if you previously have uh, registered your uh, your public service plan uh, as an OHI with uh, with Tricare or Deers or any DoD, um, uh, you can update that through uh, Humana and HealthNet, and I've got links to their websites. Uh, sec. Um, 
uh, yeah, that OHI declaration is managed by them. Um, and so all you have to do is possibly resubmit uh, the, the form that you have submitted originally, just including expiration date of 1 July 2023 for, uh, uh, for that policy. Uh, yeah, so for, and just for referrals, just as I put this in as a, as a reminder, because sometimes people are a little confused on the, the process for uh, being referred out. Uh, so if you're initially receiving care uh, on base uh, and a provider needs to refer you, uh, refer you to civilian services, um, uh, they'll identify what, what kind of um, special student they see. They might advise you on like specifically where to go. Uh, but generally, they'll just provide you uh, the, the kind of specialist you need to go see. Um, at which point, that referral, uh, once activated, goes to goes through Humana or HealthNet, uh, respectively, to be uh, approved. And there's a there's a referrals management center in, in every uh, uh, every one of these military hospitals, um, uh, and you can reach out to them or check uh, check online through your Humana or HealthNet uh, portals, um, our profiles, and uh, confirm whether or not it's been approved. Um, that can take maybe two or three days. If it hasn't been approved in two or three days, uh, you might want to uh, possibly reach back to uh, the clinic that made the referral because it might have been a, a clinician error not activating the referral. Anyway, once that's approved, uh, occasionally the referrals management, uh, management office will, uh, will help book that appointment for you. Um, but generally, they're uh, they're going to leave you to book your own appointment, um, uh, and it's not like back home where uh, where you wait to hear from a specialist uh, clinic to be told uh, when to show up. It's going to be uh, 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 it's going to be you going out and, and making the appointment. Uh, benefits is seeing a specialist usually doesn't take nearly as long here as it does in the states. Uh, and yeah, and, and once that's the case, uh, when the referrals uh, approved by, uh, by the manager, and it's um, that's going to be a direct bill situation from from that specialist to the. Uh, uh, you shouldn't, shouldn't shouldn't see a bill. You might see a copay in certain cases, uh, but again, that can be uh, submitted through MSH. Yeah, so these are a bunch of bunch of links, bunch of resources um, uh, for you guys to. Uh, to, to use when when sort of trying to navigate uh, uh, specifically the, the financial side of of, um, uh, uh, of the healthcare system and and, and the claims process here. So uh, before uh, before committing to any uh, any services or, or accessing any care uh, or paying for anything out of pocket, uh, if you're not a hundred percent sure. That something is covered either by Tricare or Public Service Healthcare Plan, or 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 that you're going to be reimbursed through uh, through the size. Um, uh, check. There's a link here for uh, the Tricare.mil site uh, where you can uh, search like by keyword of whatever kind of thing you're trying to do. Confirm that if it's covered under the, under your benefits. Confirm uh, to what extent it is. Whether or not there's any like total. Uh, uh, total annual caps or anything like that, because um, you don't want to be, uh, you know, ten appointments into some uh, uh, social work appointment or something like, this, uh, like that, and discover that you burned through your 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 ca uh, your cap on uh, on those services. Um, also, public service health care plan. Uh, you can also, I think, search by a keyword um, to confirm what exactly what the benefits. Uh, and tell them the plan R, uh, so you're not uh, at least you're not caught off guard by um, any bills that uh, that I might not have any uh, ability to uh, to help you with. Um, uh, yeah, bear in mind that uh, the public healthcare plan uh, coverage and what you got from the province back home do not overlap per perfectly. There are certain things that are going to be covered by uh, by provinces uh, as additional uh, additional services that might be technically funded out of some uh, child care program or something like that uh, that uh, there's there's no coverage for down here um, and uh, commit to uh, commit to purchasing those services uh, there's there's 
uh, there's often not much that, that we can do to, to, to reimburse those uh, uh, just based on the, just based on your assumption that it's going to be covered from um, like it was in Alberta or whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, if you uh, are going out on the economy, um, uh, recommend trying to use uh, Tricare network providers because, like I said, uh, it means that you're only going to get a fixed um, uh, fixed copay dollar, like 30, 25, 30 bucks, something like that, um, uh, rather than potentially a couple hundred uh, dollars for a 20% uh, cost share. Uh, you can find network providers based on uh, location, um, type of provider, uh, just by searching uh, the, the find a doctor uh, there on tracker.mil, uh, as well as uh, there's the, uh, the, the cost sharing um, uh, and copay uh, breakdown that you can confirm exactly what you're going to be out of pocket for whatever kind of service you're, you're getting. Um, yeah, again, bear in mind, you're not going to be able to do uh, direct billing through MSH. Um, if, uh, if anybody's asking for, for that as an insurance uh, or asking for insurance and uh, they're not happy with that, um, yeah, you may need to find uh, another provider because uh, um, out of pocket um, for whatever reason, a provider is not able to um, uh, take TRICARE or, uh, or is unwilling to direct bill TRICARE uh, and insists on some other coverage. Uh, then uh, you're going to be. You need to find a provider who's going to be okay with paying uh, you paying uh, cash rather than uh, through insurer. Uh, yeah, if for whatever reason uh, you are having to submit a claim manually to Tricare, um, you can uh, uh, the claims forms and and, and sort of like uh, uh, claims guides for Tricare. Uh, there's the first link. And there's the Humana Health Net uh, links for actually um, submitting those, those, uh, those claims uh, to each company respectively. Um, yeah, and then uh, and the MSH uh, claims portal, which we talked about earlier. Um, and the, the last, uh, last link uh, under the bullet there um, uh, is customer service uh, directory for uh, the uh, beneficiary, uh, counselor, and assistance coordinators. Um, now, mo pretty much all the major military hospitals in the U.S. Uh, in the patient administration or Tricare operations office uh, will have a benefits coordinator, counselor, uh, 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 somebody who's works for Tricare uh, and uh, is going to be your best friend anytime that you're running into issues with uh, whether or not. Uh, issues where you should be entitled to certain care but are getting told that you're not or getting a bill um, uh, or if you're struggling to figure out how to go about claiming something through uh, to, through TRICARE that you know sh you should be able to, uh, they'll be able to provide you pretty tailored uh, experience, uh, tailored uh, assistance with that there. Um, uh, pretty much everywhere that we have people, they're familiar with, uh, with the nuances of, uh, of, of our benefits. And uh, and they're they're usually great people. They're usually like really eager to help, and they love helping Canadians because I, I guess we're actually one of the least problematic uh, 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 national visitors. So um, reach out to them. Uh, you can search by uh, by base and, and state to find your your, your nearest one. Uh, they can't help with anything to do with public service health care plan. Any of the Canadian stuff, they can't do anything with. But anytime you're having any issues with uh, with Tricare benefits. Um, they're the ones to talk to if, if you're like, um, uh, if there's like an issue with your profile or something with uh, either through Genesis or through, uh, or, or maybe associated with Deers, they'll be able to go in the system, hopefully identify what the problem is. And if they can't fix it, they should be able to point you in the direction of somebody who can. Um, yeah, and so recognizing that uh, for, uh, for anything that's not being covered by TRICARE, uh, where you guys are having to go through uh, MSH for reimbursement and recognizing that there can be a uh, significant amount of time uh, waiting for those reimbursements and recognizing that the uh, cost of medical care down here can be astronomical. Um, uh, please reach out to uh, either um, for CDLS folks, 
uh, our uh, Medin Minbox uh, there, uh, or you can reach out to, um, for, for the Norad folks, you can reach out to, the, to your ORs um, and request an advance. They, uh, they're able to do the advances without coming through me. Um, but yeah, request an advance for, for any, any major expenses and uh, uh, help kind of bridge the gap while you wait for the reimbursement. Um, Yeah, so, so I put this, this in here. Um, so for those of you who saw the, the sort of one pager uh, outlining the, the, this, this shift uh, from uh, public service to TRICARE as our primary insurer and, and sort of how, how, to, uh, how to approach that, this was, this was my initial draft of that and I thought it was worth kind of putting out. Um, I was advised that it was a bit, a bit busy uh, which I, I recognize that it is, but it's uh, it's busy for a reason. And I'll give this to, uh, to Ashley to um, uh, to put up uh, on, on the website. I've, I've meant to before, but I uh, uh, forgot. Um, busy for a reason because it outlines uh, the things you need to keep in mind in kind of processing your work through based on the various scenarios that you guys might be encountering out there when, when accessing care. Um, uh, whether you are going out in the economy on your own or whether or not you're, you're being referred from, uh, uh, from a military facility. It's got all the same links that I've already discussed there for uh, uh, where to find more information on things and, and, and where to submit them and, and what you're going to need. Um, but again, I'll, that'll be a resource that's, uh, that's available on the uh, CFMWS site. Uh, so I'll send it to Ashley as soon as we're done here. Um, Dental. This is kind of a, a, a cursory thing. I, I'm not getting. I'm not hearing many issues with, with dental because there's not. There's no change. There's no change around one July over this. Um, uh, there's no real change from for anybody moving to Can uh, from Canada down here. Uh, we're all dependent dental stuff. It's still through Canada Life, just like it was back in Canada. Um, uh, submitting the same way. Um, you're not involving MSH just because you're out can. It's still directly through through Canada Life. Um, however, there aren't quite as many sort of uh, policy. Um, uh, there's not as many uh, accommodations for uh, in, in in sort of the the MFSIs, uh, which which uh, I'll talk about in a second. Um, uh, and there's obviously not the buffer of, of, of TRICARE coverage as well um, to, to mitigate the uh, significantly higher costs of, of care uh, here in Canada uh, or here in, here in the U.S. twice in Canada. Um, and again, it can be pretty astronomical. Uh, the public service dental plan is, is more or less indexed off of the uh, Ontario uh, dental sort of rate schedules. Um, but there's there's no uh, there's no schedule for for dental fees here in the U.S. So uh, uh, there could be huge discrepancies even for the same services in the same town um, from dentist to dentist. So uh, if you're uh, unsure about whether there's not something to be covered, reach out to Canada Life. Uh, have uh, uh, ask for a predetermination of benefits uh, just to confirm. Uh, if a service at a certain fee is going to be covered or if it's not, to what extent, um, so you at least can go in and make a decision on, on, on how you want to approach that. Um, and also ask around your friends, shop around. There, there may be other options for, for uh, finding uh, uh, cheaper dental care out there. Um, yeah, like I said, yeah, if, you're, if you're not sure about uh, the benefits, um, uh, we try to get life, submit, uh, submit the, you can usually get an invoice from, uh, from a provider beforehand uh, for any um, uh, sort of elective uh, services and, uh, uh, and get a predetermination just to make sure that uh, you're not gonna be left holding the bag on any of it. Yeah, so I talked about the uh, foreign service directives and the military foreign service instructions uh, as a sort of another pot of money to uh, patch some of the cracks in what's covered by public service and tracker. Um, so these are the three kind of uh, ones we see the most of. Um, big one being the one that you're going to care the most about, but 
Tensely might not be as big a deal anymore now that we're using uh, TriCare as as primary, and uh, hopefully you guys are only seeing minor copays and cost shares. Um, but for uh, R70 codes, there's sometimes some confusion about uh, what these are. So uh, when you receive your explanation of benefits back from a public service healthcare plan, uh, you won't get it from, uh, you won't see this on, on the TRICARE explanation of benefits. But when you get your explanation of benefits back from uh, public service healthcare plan, you're gonna see um, occasionally at the bottom, there'll be uh, uh, certain amounts that are indicated that they didn't reimburse uh, for, for certain reasons. And they'll have a certain code next to them, some alphanumeric code, um, and then some explanation of why that, that item wasn't, wasn't included as a, uh, as a reimbursed benefit. Um, in the cases where it says R70, that's reimbursable through us. Uh, and you can send a, uh, you can submit your claims uh, through, the, um, through, that, uh, through our MedAdmin uh, plus box. Um, Oh, that amount uh, is whatever's left over after public service health care plan is reimbursed three times the OHIP schedule rate for that particular service. Uh, so that's and that is the, the max scheme for outcan comprehensive that public service will cover for, for pretty much anything uh, where, where, there, where there isn't a specific dollar amount cap that they that, uh, that is uh, otherwise indicated. Uh, wherever there is a, you know, uh, there's you know, no kind of catastrophic cap on, on some service. They will uh, uh, limit to three times whatever the OHIP rate is for that. Uh, however, whatever isn't covered, uh, uh, whatever goes above uh, above that is identified as R70, um, the Crown will, will pick up the, the rest for that. Um, depending on immunizations, um, public service healthcare plan treats uh, immunizations as uh, pharmaceuticals, so they're only going to cover 80% of those. Uh, if they're required for school or work, um, we'll pick up the other 20%. Um, and excess dental. So when you get your, rather than an explanation of benefits, uh, back in Canada Life, you'll get, you may have seen it, a, uh, just a letter kind of identifying what the, uh, 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 what the repayment was. And there'll, uh, there'll be an amount indicated that says excess dental. Uh, and you can claim whatever that has. It's usually not very much, but uh, you're welcome to claim it. Um, additional to this, and this, uh, these, these are some of the MSI benefits that have just, uh, that have been enshrined in the, in the, in the foreign service directives for, for quite some time. Uh, more recently as a result of, um, uh, grievances to, to the treasury board, um, uh, there's also carve outs to reimburse, um, uh, fees for psychologists if no, uh, psychiatrists are available for uh, for equivalent services in the area. Um, nurse anesthetists, uh, uh, any services provided by nurse, nurse anesthetists. Um, it's common, common with uh, uh, birth. Um, outside of that, uh, I haven't seen it too much. Um, it's not a recognized profession in Canada, and so public service healthcare plan won't reimburse it. Uh, won't, won't reimburse those fees, um, uh, but. We'll, we'll, we'll pay for those. Um, and speech pathologists uh, for, um, uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, children. Um, there's a distinction drawn uh, uh, between uh, speech pathologists for some reason and occupational therapists, which are providing, which may be providing the same services. Um, occupational therapists are not going to be covered, uh, unfortunately. Um, there's a yeah, carbon for speech pathologist. Uh, right, so uh, you, know, you, you guys are all here on, on this call, so you, I'm hoping you guys are all familiar with the uh, 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 CFMWS um, uh, site. Uh, but if you're not, uh, we do have a healthcare page, which is what we're, we're, we're trying to make our, our central repository for um, uh, resources and information both for dependents and, and, uh, and members, because it's uh, easy to access. Um, it's not dependent on having D1 or um, social access to any of our, uh, any of our D1 sites. Um, it can be viewed at work or on US computers, civilian side, whatever. Um, and 
with our our working relationship with uh, uh, with uh, CWS, we're we have a little more control over having this uh, this edited and updated, which we are working on. We're, we're we're constantly putting more stuff out there. We pulled a lot down over the summer because a lot of it needs just to be completely redone. Um, uh, but we're getting more and more out there. Uh, so I really encourage uh, if you guys are ever running into questions or issues, uh, like uh, before you reach out to anybody, have a look here. Um, there uh, there may there may be answers there. There's scenarios there. Kind of walking through a bunch of possible uh, uh, cases, um, as well as uh, a bunch of the helpful links that I've uh, discussed already. Uh, our big main document is kind of kind of uh, kind of a long read, uh, but there's a lot of information there. It's worth having a look if, uh, if, if you're ever unsure about something. Uh, and any of the bulletins that ever go out uh, from, from either, um, either of the support units uh, from us, uh, we, we cash here as well. Um, uh, Canadian Air Force's uh, uh, member assistance program. Uh, if you guys haven't heard, uh, great resource for uh, any uh, counseling or mental health services uh, in Canada, typically used uh, just for uh, uniform members. While out can, it's available to uh, to our dependents as well. Um, so uh, you know, uh, let your let your families know, let your let your kids know. Uh, I think we can. Uh, provide up to 10 counseling services over the phone, uh, but then they can also coordinate um, uh, to find a uh, find services locally uh, to, to continue the, whatever whatever services are required. Uh, Genesis, um, yeah, so uh, the it's been a bit of a process over the last couple of years, but uh, DoD uh, and Tricare has migrated all of their electronic uh, health records and management system over to this new, uh, this new uh, military health system at Genesis, um, which has a uh, patient portal. Um, and hearing a lot of kind of issues with, especially with dependents uh, on, on being able to uh, view and access and, and, and accomplish certain things uh, in the system. Um, uh, once you, uh, you can follow that link for the DS logon. You can set up, uh, uh, you can set up your own your own logon. Um, uh, if you can't, uh, possibly reach out to uh, your local BCAC because they may be able to identify why you're not registered in the right place in the system. Um, uh, because generally, like I said before, you need to be rostered to uh, a uh, a facility. Uh, in order to, um, in order for them to know kind of like where relationally networked you are uh, in the system, um, uh, and that allows you to kind of do all the all the uh, appointment bookings and uh, medication management and records checks and whatever whatever you uh, and like uh, you know check on your lab results whatever you know all kinds of stuff in here uh, as long as you are appropriately registered with the. Uh, with your with your your uh, military troop facility. So, if you are having problems with that, uh, reach out to the BCAC. They may uh, they may be able to point you to. They may have some in house um, uh, sort of Genesis guru. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. I can get onto my own profile, but uh, aside from that, it's not my system. I uh, I'm, I'm not a really a tech genius, and I so I don't really have a great visibility on the, the back end of it to know. Uh, what the, what needs to be troubleshot for uh, uh, for getting sort of the, the full range of service? Uh, we're always going to be a little limited on on what we're able to do um, uh, in these systems that are really set up for uh, U.S. military uh, and their families. Um, and a lot of the a lot of the facilities here are still getting used to working out the bugs and workarounds in the system. Um, uh, but it, it's a useful tool for for uh, for managing uh, certain bits of our care, uh, especially accessing uh, any any records and uh, and clinical notes uh, from our visits on base. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, the the, the fact that we can't be uh, you may have heard uh, that you need to have a primary care manager at some point while trying to book appointments or something like that. Um, uh, if you ever do encounter that again, just let them know that 
for military, NATO can't be uh, assigned uh, primary care managers. Uh, and so they, they're, they're usually able to then find a, another workaround. Um, but that one factor is really a hindrance to a lot of the, the sort of our, our relationship to these, these systems. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, if, uh, uh, if you are running into issues, like if you haven't done so yet, I encourage you to, to, to set up your log on and, and, uh, uh, and use it to have a look through the system. Um, uh, and if you're having issues with that, uh, yeah, reach out to your, your local uh, your local clinic. And uh, if the beneficiary counselor isn't able to help you out, they uh, they should be able to point you out, point point you to who should who can. Um, yeah. Uh, right. So kind of finishing up here. Uh, here's our contacts for the team, um, uh, as well as the uh, the medical admin box. Uh, feel free to reach out with any of your specific questions for the rest of your time here. Um, I know, uh, I know some, of the, some of the questions that came in uh, prior to this were, were, were pretty specific and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to be reaching out uh, afterwards if you're not on the ground um, to, uh, uh, to provide some specific answers. But, uh, um, but if you encounter any, uh, any issues going forward, I would rather hear about them sooner than, than later because uh, uh, bills can add up, collection companies can be uh, kind of ruthless down here, and, uh, and it gets a little more chaotic to try to solve the problem if, uh, if a lot of times elapsed. Um, but yeah, uh, reach out if you have questions or you need, need directions to some, some resource. Uh, we're happy to help. Um, we can't always solve every problem, but, uh, but we'll, we'll use what information we have to try to point you in the direction of the solution. Great, thank you for this informative presentation, Andrew, and thank you to everyone who joined us for tonight's session. At this time, I will end the recording and open the floor to any questions.